Vitam vas wszystkich. Are you constantly plagued by 220 volt power supplies when you import your computers from Europe? If you're like me, this is a problem. So there are a couple solutions you can do. I mean, you can get a bulky power converter, but I find it cheaper and easier to just replace the power supply with a modern ATX power supply. Once that's done, there are two ways you can power your board. The first way is to buy one of these adapters, which go from ATX to AT. A little bit of modification, you might need to enlarge these, we'll go into that a little bit later, but you can retain your stock switch. The other thing you can do is if you have a computer that's equipped with a motherboard that can take AT and ATX, this is a PC chip M726 motherboard, Pentium 2, go ahead and put the ATX one in there, um, but you will have to modify the old school switch, because these switches back in the day actually ran 120 volts through them to give the signal to the power supply and not turn on the computer. Modern switches are a push button type momentary switch that give a signal to the motherboard, motherboard lights it up, and there you go. So there is a way to retain the clickiness of the original switches while making it momentary, and I will show you how to do that. So having a peek through the 486 system here, what I've done is I've removed the AT power supply and replaced it with this standard ATX unit and in order to get around the wiring problem, I got one of these harnesses, this one's up close, uh, off of eBay for, I think they were three or four bucks. And what they do is they connect to the ATX connector here, and then that harness switches it back down to the AT style. For power, you have to route these two wires back to the switch. I don't know if you can see that, but I went ahead and soldered these ones on there. You can kind of see that in there. And they go to the front, and I just used one half of the stock switch. So this is your standard AT double pole single throw switch, which means there is a switch on this side and a switch on this side. What this does is you get 120 volts coming in here and on here. Since it's alternating, there's really no polarity. And you get one side coming off of that, one side coming off of that back into the power supply, which physically feeds power to the motherboard. AT on the other hand is, ATX, sorry, is just the a little, you know, push button momentary switch that feeds signal to it through the motherboard, and that's how you get power. So to convert the AT to ATX, you will have to simply plug these into there. However, these are five millimeter blade connectors, and we will need eight millimeter blade connectors. These are cut off of something else, but essentially, Connect that into that. You solder those onto there. Obviously you would use, this is a ridiculous gauge, I think it's from a UPS or something. Uh, and then that's your solution right there. So the result of that is you get to keep your stock AT switch in an ATX system and you future-proofed your machine. Uh, if you're wondering why these are blank, the CD-ROM and the five and a quarter inch bay cover are retro on the balcony. Anyways, you know, it's your standard push-on, push-off style switch. I'll fix that. So this Pentium 2 with a PC Chips M726 motherboard has the option of having both AT and ATX power supplies in it. It did come with a 220 volt only Euro AT style power supply and I replaced it with an ATX. Uh, let me show you a little bit inside. Oh, the best cable management you've ever seen. So here are the connectors for the power supply. This one is the ATX, right there. And the AT is right beside it. So that was swapped out. And now, I could have just used this adapter, I guess, and put it from ATX to AT and use the stock switch, but there's a freer solution than wasting your money on that thing. And that is to modify the switch because if you were to fire one of these up and turn it on it would turn on for about eight seconds and then shut off again because what happens if you hold down an AT power, ATX power supply switch power goes off okay so this is an AT case with an ATX power supply so it's not really meant to have a push on push off momentary switch in it anywhere except well there's a reset button but I want to keep that for resetting so what I've done a momentary style switch and it's wired up as that here those are just the wires that go to the switch and 
can see how it, it pops out. It doesn't stay in. It doesn't do one of these two-way push on, push off. It's a momentary switch. I'm going to show you how to do that with one of these. So you could just drill a hole in here somewhere and put a momentary switch, but uh, that would be very barbaric. So to get the job done, you'll need an AT switch, a screwdriver, maybe another screwdriver, uh, probably a pair of pliers, and maybe a wire cutter. The reason I'm saying maybe is I've only done this once and I don't remember what tools I used, so this is kind of like a live take. So let's, uh, let's get into this. Let's get rid of these wires. And then what we're going to do is we're going to bend these tabs up and these tabs out. So good zoom on there and we'll work in this little area here okay so I found it easy you could probably use smaller pliers that would be wise to hook it against the edge and bend the retaining clips straight that takes care of that side this side is a little bit more of a pain be careful when you're doing this you don't slide out and stab yourself that happened oh it already healed oh no right there yeah that happened when I was working on my car same thing so don't do that watch it happen All right, maybe there's a different way to pry up on this yeah that's it just kinda wiggle under there get it up from the side take your ridiculously large pliers don't use don't use these pliers use smaller ones and we'll do the same over here kind of carefully okay and then you also need to take this part off because this is what actually causes the whole mechanism to rebound back and forth you'll see there's a little metal slider pivot point in there so yeah these seem to fire off somehow mysteriously all right so see all the spring does is it causes it to return so on off on off but we're gonna get rid of this pin right here so now we gotta carefully pry this open Chances are the actual rockers are going to fly off. Oh, maybe not. And there they are. And those are the things that make the... Those are the things. Well, these are the connectors. When you turn this on, both phases, I guess, because it's... Well, it's a one phase. Uh, both polarities. I don't say C, so correct me here in the comments if I'm wrong. Um, this is what switches them on and off, so... In the AT setup, the ATX setup only needs one because it's just a switch. So there's this little pin in here. You can see that in there. Basically, throw it out. And then realign everything nicely on top like that. You can test it. And then put the casing back together. Get back here, you. If it's stubborn, you might need to bend these out to be straight. Okay, that's good. Put that on. Actually, let me go grab a multimeter real quick. All right, the best multimeter ever. Uh, it doesn't have to do much. All I'm doing is checking if it is actually a momentary switch right now. I'm going to simulate All right, so and then the spring would push it out. I just want to make sure that it works. I didn't knock anything loose in there, any of the actual Rockers are off the plates. Sometimes there's springs and little balls in there too. So that's working too. Good. So we can put it back together. Actually, that might be why 
tries to bend these back before. slide it over. There's a little tab there, like a little notch. Yeah, that's enough. You don't need to, like, crush it down. It, just, it has to survive a fall like that, pretty much. And then these ones, just kind of, yeah, fold them down. Uh, if you saw that, there'd be another one. Yeah, that's it. You can make it look all stock-like. And then, this is a bit tricky, because the switch is going to want to move down, so... I can never remember if it's from the top or it's from the... Oh, well, okay. And that is now a momentary switch. So that's two ways to use an ATX power supply in an AT machine. So, hope you enjoyed that video. Like if you like it, subscribe if you want to have more. There's other content and there will be more slowly coming out over the course of the summer. So, do zobaczenia!